hybrid race cars. They're pretty much everywhere now. From British touring car racing to the top levels of open wheel, rally and endurance racing, the combination of a regular engine with an electric motor has given us some very rapid cars and excellent racing. Various brands used the wide world of motorsports to experiment with all sorts of new technologies to make their cars faster and eventually let it trickle down into everyday road cars, and hybrid systems are the perfect example of this. The last generation of LMP1 cars especially pushed the development of hybrid drivetrains into overdrive. But by now the technological arms race has somewhat calmed down a bit. Spec third-party battery packs and energy recovery systems are commonplace now, and manufacturers no longer need to spend an unhealthy amount of time and money trying to figure out the fundamentals of an all-new system. But just like with any kind of revolutionary technology, there's always one specific race car that gets credited with being the first to successfully use it in a competition. Like disc brakes on the 1953 Le Mans winning Jaguar C-Type or the wings of the Lotus 49B. They may not have been the first race cars to use these pioneering features, but they were the first ones to show the mainstream audience and competitors that they worked. So let's take a look at the first race car to use a hybrid drivetrain successfully, the one that ended up being a cornerstone to the new generation of motorsport. Before we get to the car we're all here for, we have to start with something a lot less exciting, the Toyota Prius. If there's one car brand that took hybrids to the masses, it's got to be Toyota. Their Prius was initially ridiculed and mocked by the average petrol head, but there's no denying the impact it had on the car industry. Back in 2006, nine years after the introduction of the first gen Prius, Toyota expanded their hybrid offerings with the Lexus GS 450H. Hybrids up to that point were mostly all front-wheel drive econo boxes, but the Lexus was the complete opposite, as it paired Toyota Hybrid Drive 2 system with a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 and sent all the power to the rear wheels which was an industry first. This car then formed the base for what would be Toyota's first hybrid race car. The only other major hybrid race car so far was the Panos Q9 GTR1 hybrid, aptly called Sparky, in 1998. A car literal decades ahead of its time. After failing to qualify at the 1998 Le Mans 24 hours, it performed quite well in the 1998 Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta, finishing 12th overall and second in class. But whereas the Panos and the Lexus road car had a single electric motor, the new Lexus race car had an additional ace up its sleeve, thanks to a supercapacitor. While the drivetrain of the car remained fairly stock, the addition of a supercapacitor meant that energy recovered under braking could be stored and then delivered to the wheels again at a much faster rate compared to conventional batteries. The overall power output of the car remained at 341 horsepower, as the goal wasn't to gain more power, but to be more efficient. After upgrading the suspension, brakes, adding a dry ice cooling system for the battery and adding some tasty Ray's TE37 rims as a cherry on top, Toyota then entered the car in the 2006 Tokachi 24 hours endurance race which was around in the Super Taikyu series. Super Taikyu was, and still is, Japan's leading pro-am racing series. And while the series now features all sorts of race cars from different classes, back in 2006 it was strictly meant for cars based on road cars. So that meant the usual JDM sports cars including a plethora of Subaru Imprezas, Mitsubishi Lancer Revolutions and the odd Porsche here and there. Even though the Super Takio organization knew what was coming by adding a special class dedicated for hybrid vehicles, undoubtedly being one of the first racing series in the world to do so, Toyota built their car to the normal ST1 specifications anyway. Probably to be able to compare their efforts better with the normal non-hybrid race cars. In the end, the biggest and heaviest car on the grid managed to complete the full 24-hour race and finish 17th out of 33 cars, and most importantly it had zero issues in doing so. A very successful result for the still experimental car. Toyota, obviously satisfied with the performance of the car and its hybrid system, decided to continue the project by building an all-new hybrid race car. But instead of taking a big luxury Lexus 4-door sedan as a base, they went completely off the rails and created a monster. For the 2007 edition of the race, Toyota decided to drag an old legend out of retirement to turn it into a hybrid weapon, an old Super GT GT500 spec Toyota Supra. The Supra had been quite a potent machine in Super GT or JGTC as it was known up until 2004. It won the Constructors' Championship four times, initially powered by a version of the 3SG four-cylinder engine. The 2JZ at six-cylinder beloved by all may have been possible to create an endless amount of horsepower useful for drifting and drag racing, 
but the smaller and a lot lighter four-cylinder was a better fit if you wanted agile handling on a racetrack. In the later seasons, Toyota replaced it with a version of the 3UZ FE V8, which provided more torque and its V-shape had the added benefit of being able to be mounted as a stressed member to the chassis. Toyota eventually replaced the whole car with the new Lexus SC430 at the end of the 2006 season. The Supra had been out of production for years now, so it's time to move on to something new. It's one of these old retired V8 Supras that was brought back to life in 2007. On the outside it may look like the regular Super GT car, but underneath it was completely different. Dubbed the Supra HVR, it still retained the V8, but just like the Lexus it now also featured a super capacitor, and not one but three electric motors, one at the back and two at the front for each wheel, making the Supra four-wheel drive. The front motors were only capable of producing an extra 14 horsepower each, and their main goal was to recover as much energy as possible under braking. This would charge up the supercapacitor and drastically reduce wear on the brake pads. The main horsepower boost came from the big electric motor on the rear axle, capable of an added 150 horsepower. When all the motors and the V8 worked together, they gave the Supra HVR a mighty impressive 710 horsepower, a whole lot more than the near 500 the Super GT version had. And because there was no battery weighing the car down, since the capacitor did all the work, the Supra tipped the scales at just over 1000 kilograms. When you put this car next to the usual Super Takio grid, it was like taking an intercontinental ballistic missile to a knife fight. There simply was no competition. After getting settled in the first few laps, the Supra took off and never looked back. Even the occasional rain shower couldn't slow the car down. After 616 laps, the Supra dominantly won the 24 hour race with a morale breaking 19 lap lead, becoming the first ever hybrid car to win a race overall. But it's not like it completely destroyed the championship hopes of the other teams, since it was a one-off experimental race appearance anyway. Toyota did a few promotional events with the car afterwards, showing off its technology to curious fans. Toyota learned valuable lessons developing and racing the car and put it to good use when years later they created their TSO30 LMP1 car, which used a similar supercapacitor system and laid the foundations of what Toyota is now in the World Endurance Championship, the number one team to beat. The modern world of hybrid race cars was built upon the foundations laid by the few people daring to think outside the box. Don Panos and his Q9 GTR1 may have been one of the earliest pioneers that showed the motorsport world the way forward, but the Supra HVR made sure to hit the nail on the head and showed hybrid race cars were here to stay. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next one.